Hello BCPS families. Today we will work on a pre-K math lesson about creating and extending patterns by finding the unit. You'll have a chance to create your own patterns with a family member and we'll end today with some ideas to continue your learning. Hello pre-K families and ABC families. My name is Barbie Pullman and I'm a resource teacher with the Office of Early Childhood. I work with the Elisa Brandwine Center, also called ABC. We travel to several area Title I schools and we teach caregiver child school readiness classes for children ages 0 to 4. If you'd like to learn more about our program, you can visit the BCPS website and click on Office of Early Childhood. Before we begin our pre-K math lesson today on patterns, we need to warm up our brain with a brain smart start. The first step in the brain smart start is called Unite. Today, we'll sing a welcome song to welcome you to learning today. Here comes my older daughter to help us sing today. Ready? Clap your hands with me. Welcome, welcome everyone. We're glad you're here. Let's have some fun. Can you clap your hands like so? Then bend down and touch your toes. Welcome, welcome everyone. We're glad you're here. Let's have some fun. You did it. The second step in the Brain Smart Start is called Disengage Stress. Today we'll do a breathing strategy called Star Breathing. If you take a look at the star, you'll see there are letters to spell the word star. Will you say those letters with me? Ready? S T A R. The S stands for smile. The T stands for take a deep breath. The A stands for and. And the R stands for relax. So we say, smile, take a deep breath, and relax. We're going to do this breathing strategy three times. Ready? Smile, take a deep breath in through your nose, and relax your body. Let's try it again. Smile, deep breath in through your nose, and relax. Last one. Smile. Breathe and relax. Great job. The third step in the Brain Smart Start is called Connect. Today we'll connect to someone by singing the song The Eensy Weensy Spider. If you're sitting alone right now, call over a family member to join you. You'll hold out your arm to be the water spout, and your family member will pretend to be the spider crawling up your arm. I have my younger daughter here with me to show you how to do the song. You ready? Okay, here we go. The eensy weensy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the Incy weensy spider went up the spout again. <laughs> you did it. The fourth step in the Brain Smart Start is called commit. It's where you make a promise for how you'll do your best job today. I promise to use my watching eyes so I can see all our patterns today. Show us your watching eyes. You did it. Let's get started on our lesson. Read our I can statement along with me. I can create and extend simple repeating patterns. Look, I see a vocabulary card. I notice in the picture that some shapes repeat in the same order over and over. This must be a pattern. Try saying the names of the shapes with me. Triangle circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle. You did it. Learning all we can about patterns will help us to be better mathematicians as we grow. Let's see if we can figure out what we'll be doing with these patterns today. We read that we will create patterns today. Create means to make or build. Have you ever built a castle out of sand or mud or even Play-Doh? That's creating. 
What else have you created? We can create patterns in many ways. In this picture, I created a pattern with two colors, blue and red. It goes blue square, red square, blue square, red square. We read that we will extend patterns. Extend means to add on to something that is already there or to make it longer. Thumbs up if you've ever built a tower out of blocks. Maybe you went back to the tower later and you added more blocks to it. That's extending. I extended the pattern in the box by making it longer. I added the colored shapes that come next. Blue square and red square. Hello, boys and girls. We're going to sing a song today about a creature who makes patterns. It's a song that you know very well. As I sing the song today, I'm going to leave out two of the words. See if you can fill in the missing words. The song is called The Eensy Weensy Spider. Here comes Mr. Spider to help us sing today. Are you ready? Let's try it. The Eensy Weensy Spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and Wash the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the eensy weensy spider went up the spout again. You did it. You filled in the missing words in our song. Mr. Spider is here with us today because spiders build their own homes called webs. Spiders create a web by spinning silk. As the silk is spun, it creates a pattern. Take a look at the pattern on the web. Today, we will learn about patterns. We can find patterns all around us. Take a moment to think of a pattern that you've seen in your home before. I went on a pattern hunt in my home. Here are the patterns that I found. I noticed that this blanket had a pattern. I saw the colors red and black repeating on it. Look, red stripe, black stripe, red stripe, black stripe. I looked through our toys and I found this toy zebra. Do you see a pattern on the zebra? If you said he has colors of black and white, black and white, repeating, you were right. His stripes make a pattern. I love to do crafts. I created this shooting star craft. Do you notice a pattern on it? I use the colors blue and red to make a pattern. It goes blue, red, blue, red, blue, Next would be red. My family loves to play games. As we were playing this game, I noticed that the chips formed a pattern. Take a look at this one here. What colors do you see? It goes black, red, black, red, black, red. What about these chips? Do these colors make a pattern? I see black, red, red, black, red, red. After every black comes two red chips. That makes a pattern too. See if you can find some patterns in your home after we complete our lesson today. Before we begin, you'll want to make sure that you have these pictures from your Print Pathway packet. If you haven't already cut out your Eensy Weensy Spider pictures, do that now. You can ask a grown-up to cut for you while you listen to the lesson. Let's get started. Let's start by making sure we know what a pattern is. A pattern is something that repeats over and over. In this picture, we see shapes repeating. Hexagon, square. Hexagon, square. 
hexagon, square, hexagon, square. A unit includes the items or things that repeat in the same order throughout the pattern. In this pattern, there are two shapes, hexagon and square. The hexagon comes first and then the square. This is our unit. The unit is repeated four times in this picture. Count it with me. One, two, three, four. You might be thinking that patterns are all about shapes and colors. Many are, but patterns can also be made with sizes, movements, even sounds or words. For example, I could say, flower, butterfly, flower, butterfly, flower, butterfly. Hi boys and girls, we learned that a pattern is something that repeats over and over. Watch as I model for you how I might create a pattern using the Eensy Weensy Spider Pictures from your Print Pathway Packet. Before I create the pattern, I first must think of my unit. The unit includes the items that will be repeated in the same order throughout the pattern. For this pattern, I'll choose spider and sun to be the unit of my pattern. First comes spider, second comes sun. To make this into a pattern, I must repeat these items in the same order. Watch, spider, sun, spider, sun. To check that I completed my pattern correctly, it's helpful to say the names of the pictures. Try it along with me. Spider, sun, spider, sun, spider, sun. That sounds right. This is an A-B pattern. When we say A, that represents the spider. When we say B, that represents the sun. Say the letters along with me. A, B, A, B, A, B. You did it. Now I'll model for you how I might make a different A-B pattern using different pictures from the packet today. Watch as I remove my pictures. I'm putting them in separate piles to keep them organized. That makes it easier for me to find them when I need it. This time, I'm going to make my unit be rain sun. To make this into a pattern, I repeat the unit by doing rain first and then the sun. Ready? Rain. Sun, rain, sun. If I wanted to make the pattern longer by extending it, I would just repeat my unit again. Rain, sun. I extended my pattern. To check that it's right, it's helpful to say the names of the pictures. Let's do it together. Rain, sun, rain, sun. Rain, sun, rain, sun. It sounds right. This is also an A-B pattern. This time, A represents rain and B represents sun. Let's say the letters. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. You did it. Now it's your turn to help. I'm going to create a new pattern for you, and it's going to be your job to figure out the unit of the pattern. Let's see if I can trick you. Okay, I'm going to create the new pattern. Here it comes. Okay. Take a look at this pattern. Go ahead and say the names of the pictures. Ready? Spider, rain, spider, rain, spider, rain. 
it's our job to find the unit. Remember, the unit includes the items that are repeated in the same order. Which two pictures did I use? If you said spider and rain, you're correct. I repeated a spider and rain over and over to create my pattern. Let's see if you can extend this pattern. What would come next after rain? Go ahead and say the pattern to help you figure it out. Ready? Spider, rain, spider, rain, spider, rain. It sounds like spider comes next. You got it. You extended the pattern. Now, let's get a little trickier. Instead of making an A-B pattern this time, I'm going to make a different type of pattern. Again, it's your job to find the unit of the pattern. Here we go. I wonder which pictures I'll use this time. Hmm. Hey, almost ready to show you. Okay, here it comes. Take a look at this pattern. Go ahead and say the names of the pictures. Rain, spider, sun. Rain, spider, sun. Rain, spider, sun. Hmm. We need to figure out the unit of this pattern. To figure out the unit, we look for the items that have been repeated. Which items did I use today? You're right, I used rain, spider, and sun. Those three pictures were repeated in the same order throughout the pattern. You found the unit. Now, can you find what would come next in the pattern? That means you'll extend the pattern for me. Go ahead and say it again to see what comes next. Rain, spider, sun. Rain, spider, sun. Rain, spider, sun. It sounds like rain would come next. Let's place rain and we'll check our work. Hmm. I see we had a sun. If I look back in the pattern, after a sun comes rain. We're right. You extended the pattern. Now I'll show you some ways that you can make patterns using objects that you might find in your house. The last pattern that we created with the picture cards was an ABC pattern. I wonder if we could use these toys to create an ABC pattern too. I have some blocks, cars, and Jack. I know to create an ABC pattern that I'm going to need to use three different objects. A, B, C. Let's see if we can do it. I'll start with a block, a car, and a Jack. This will be the unit of my pattern. I'm going to repeat block, car, jack in the same order to create my pattern today. Next will come block, car, jack. Let's repeat it again. Block, car, jack. Now we'll check our work to make sure we've done the pattern correctly. Ready? Block, car, jack, block, car, jack, block, car, jack. We did it. We created an ABC pattern. Say the letters along with me. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. You got it. Now I wonder if we wanted to extend our pattern, what would come next after the jack? Hmm. We can look back in the pattern. 
we're going to find another jack. Here's one. And we're going to look what comes after it. A block. You're right. Let's put a block here. Now we can say the pattern to see if it sounds right. Ready? Block, car, jack. Block, car, jack. Block, car, jack. Block. You did it. Let's try to add one more part of the pattern. What comes after block? If you're having trouble, look back in the pattern to another block and see what comes next. You said car, you might be right. Let's put it here and we'll say the pattern to see if we're right. Block, car, jack. Block, car, jack. Block, car, jack, block, car, you did it. Now I've created a different type of pattern for you using objects that you probably have in your house, spoons and forks. Take a look at the pattern here. Let's say the names of the objects together. Spoon, spoon, fork, fork, spoon, spoon, Fork, fork, spoon, spoon, fork, fork. It's your job to figure out what the unit of my pattern is. Think about which types of objects I've repeated throughout my pattern. If you named spoon and fork, you're right. Those are the two types of objects we've used. But did we have only one of each in the pattern or two? We had two. Take a look, boys and girls. We have two spoons and two forks. This is the unit of our pattern. After two spoons come two forks. I'll separate the units here so that you can see it better. Here's our unit, and we repeated it once and twice. Now, if we were to extend this pattern, do you know what would come next? Think about what comes after a fork in the pattern. If we look back here, what comes after a fork is a spoon. Let's set it down. What comes after the spoon? You're right, another spoon. Our unit tells us that we have two spoons together before we have any forks. Let's say the pattern to see if we got it right. Ready? Spoon, spoon, fork, fork. Spoon, spoon, fork, fork. Spoon, spoon, fork, fork. Spoon, spoon. You got it. What kind of pattern is this if we were to describe it with letters? Could it be an ABC pattern? Hmm. No, it can't be an ABC. We only have two different kinds of objects. We're only going to use the letter A and the letter B. Is it an AB pattern? Hmm, not that either. We have two A's and two B's. It's called an AABB pattern. When we say A, this represents the spoon. And when we say B, this represents the fork. Let's say the letters together, ready? A, A, B, B. A, A, B, B. A, A, B, B. A, A. And then it would be B, B, two more forks. Now, did you know we don't have to describe patterns with letters? We can describe them in many different ways. You could make this pattern with body movements. What if we decided to tap our head every time we saw a spoon? And what if we decided to tap our shoulders every time we saw a fork? Let's try it. Ready? Head, head. Shoulders, shoulders. Head, head. Shoulders, Shoulders, head, head, 
shoulders, shoulders. And we end with head, head. It's always fun to add body movements to your pattern. I hope you had fun making patterns with me. Take some time over the next few days to create and extend some patterns of your own using toys or other objects that you have in your house. For now, it's your turn to show us what you know. Now it's your turn to show what you know. I'll play some music for a few minutes. If you haven't already, cut out your Eensy Weensy Spider pictures from the Print Pathway Packet. Use these pictures to create your own patterns. After you've made a few patterns, have your grown-up begin a pattern. Your job is to extend it. If you don't have your pictures handy, draw your own patterns using paper and a pencil. Use toys you have in your house or make them using movements. If you need more time, you can keep working after our lesson. Have fun! How did you do? If creating patterns was tricky for you, work on creating only A, B patterns for now. Try using body movements to help remember the pattern, such as clap, tap shoulders, clap, tap shoulders, clap, tap shoulders. Ask your grown-up to make patterns and non-patterns. Look carefully and see if you can figure out which are the patterns. If you're ready for a challenge, try making complex patterns such as ABC, AAB, or AABC. Have your grown up create a pattern for you with a mistake. Your job is to fix the mistake. Here are ways to continue your learning. Check out the math activities in the Print Pathway Packet for the dates May 26th and May 27th. Look for patterns at home and outside. Draw pictures or take photographs of what you see. Create patterns using objects in your home. Then show the pattern in different ways, such as through sounds or movements. Finally, be sure to access BrainPop Junior in Schoology to learn more. You did it. You created and extended patterns. This will help you to become a better mathematician. To say goodbye, we'll say our chant. Hands up high and hands down low. We're the BCPS family wherever we go. Bye-bye.